Hi everyone, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. For those of you who haven't been here before, hi, I'm Lori Hill. And on this channel, we talk about beauty, celebrities, plastic surgery, and cosmetic procedures. I also talk about the particular products that celebrities use and tell you where you can get them. So if that sounds good to you, then don't get FOMO. Make sure to subscribe. In today's video, we'll discuss the body changes that someone may expect to see while taking a GLP-1. GLP-1 stands for glucagon-like peptide 1, and they are known under names such as Manjaro, Ozempic, Wagovi, amongst others. Now, many celebrities, as well as regular people, have been taking these GLP-1s to lose weight. Now, I've done other videos on Ozempic and other GLP-1s that you can check out after this video. I'll have them linked down below in the description box. This video, though, will address a specific area of interest related to body plastic surgeries as a direct result of losing a lot of weight on a GLP-1. Let's get started. The media has been focusing a lot on the term ozempic face, which refers to the changes the face goes through after significant weight loss from a GLP-1 medication. And on this topic, it's been confirmed that the changes that people see on GLP-1s to their face are no different than the changes one might expect to see with extreme weight loss. Changes such as deflated facial volume, especially to the cheeks and to the temples, and general laxity to the facial skin and tissue overall. And these changes have been determined to be no different than the usual changes you would see with weight loss. But when it comes to the body, I believe that the changes people are seeing with weight loss from GLP-1s is different. In this video, we'll talk about the changes that one might see after losing a lot of weight on medications like Ozempic, Wagovi, Manjaro, and others. I believe and have data to back it up that the weight loss on these medications is different than the usual weight loss you would see if you were to go about it naturally or through other means. The weight loss from these medications seems to be targeted specifically to the abdomen and the glute area. Now, these aren't the only areas, of course, that you're going to lose adipose fat tissue, but in these areas, the fat loss is the most pronounced. And because of these extreme changes to those specific areas, plastic surgeons are predicting a boom to their business in the next couple years. The boon, they believe, will be coming from patients wanting surgery to mitigate their loose skin in certain specific areas after their weight loss from a GLP-1. In this video, we'll address where the weight loss is exactly occurring when someone is taking the GLP-1 medications. We'll also address why the weight loss seems to be happening in those areas. I'll also talk about plastic surgeries to this area, as well as give you alternatives to surgery. There's nothing wrong with having loose skin after weight loss. And it's my opinion that we need more loose skin acceptance in our society. I oftentimes think people are scared to lose weight because of the resulting loose skin that comes along with it. And that's such a shame in my opinion. I really hope in the next few years that loose skin acceptance will become something that's more prevalent. In this video, I'll discuss the changes that people will experience when they're on a GLP-1 medication. Now, I know this information is different than what you've been hearing because we've been told that the weight loss on a GLP-1 is no different than any other type of weight loss. But my research tells me otherwise, and I'll link the articles that I've used for reference down below in my description box. Now, I've also spoken to many people currently on the medication and recorded their experiences about their own bodies as well. Please understand that this this video is not promoting or encouraging plastic surgery for these changes. This video is to serve as a source of information and a likely predictor of what's to come in the body plastic surgery landscape. Now let's start with the changes to the waistline, which from my research is the most pronounced area of weight loss on GLP-1s. GLP-1 medications focus on cutting and diminishing visceral fat, which is fat around the organs specifically. A study done in 2022 on a sample size of 932 patients found that a GLP-1 agonist reduced both visceral 
adipose tissue as well as subcutaneous adipose tissue. And remember that visceral fat is the fat around the organs. Another study in 2019 on liraglutide, another type of GLP-1 agonist, found that it reduced whole body fat mass, but especially visceral fat. Both of these studies, as well as others, point to the possible evidence that GLP-1s are doing more than just assisting patients in their weight loss, that they may be in fact assisting in actual spot reduction, which is something that experts have said was impossible to do in the past. The reason that the visceral fat reduction is important here is because when visceral fat is reduced, one sees a reduction to their waistline. Although visceral fat is fat around the organ, organs, it also shows outwardly as people with a lot of visceral fat will generally have a larger abdomen area. Plastic surgeons are starting to see patients come in with large amounts of weight loss from these GLP-1s and are saying that the weight loss seems to be focused on their abdomen, theorizing that the appetite suppression and slower gastric motility induced by these medications result in a drop in excess body and abdominal fat. Now, as a result of all of this, Surgeons anticipate a huge surge in body procedures in the next coming years. Surgeries like tummy tucks and mini tummy tucks are anticipated to be the surgeries of choice for these patients. And though plastic surgeons may see a rise of those procedures, they will likely see a drop in liposuction cases, as patients using GLP-1s will have more loose skin than excess fat to liposuction. Now let's talk about the cost of a tummy tuck. The cost of a tummy tuck can range anywhere from $10,000 to over $30,000, and that doesn't include the anesthesia fees or the surgical facility. Another option for slight loose skin to the abdomen if you really feel like you need to do something but you're not a candidate for a tummy tuck would be Morpheus 8, which is a device that uses radio frequency energy and microneedling to reshape and contour your face and body. By penetrating deep into your skin and fat, it can make you look smoother and sleeker. It's important to note, however, that Morpheus 8 cannot offer dramatic skin tightening or lifting. For even better results, Morpheus 8 can be used together with PRP. In August of 2022, Kim Kardashian had this procedure to her abdomen to take care of some loose skin. And Kim said that while it worked, it was very painful. One session of Morpheus 8 costs about $1,800, but can go up to $3,000 depending on the provider. And you should expect multiple treatment sessions depending on your skin. Let's talk about surgery alternatives. If you are experiencing loose skin to your abdomen, I strongly encourage you to take up Pilates or another form of core building exercise. I think it's really important to first try to build up the muscles to your abdomen before having surgery. Sometimes building up those muscles can take up that extra loose skin. Let's talk about the GLP-1's effect on breasts. Now, many patients on GLP-1's will experience very rapid weight loss, much faster than traditional weight loss techniques. And this rapid weight loss can really have an effect on the breast tissue. As we age, our breast tissue goes from being mostly glandular to being mostly fat. Now remember, fat is a supportive structure. And if fat is lost quickly, as the weight loss is very fast, generally on these GLP-1s, you should expect to see a loss of that supportive structure, i.e. fat. When this happens, the breasts and the skin will sag and droop. Now surgeons are suggesting a surgical remedy to this, such as breast augmentation with implants to fill in that skin envelope or a breast lift with implants or without implants or a breast lift with fat transfer to the breast. If you do go the surgical route, you should be at your stable weight for at least six months before you have the surgery. Sometimes these extreme changes can be mitigated with slower weight loss and doing weight bearing exercises to the chest while you're losing the weight. The cost of breast augmentation can range from 5,000 for a simple implant procedure 
to over 30,000 for a lift with implants or fat transfers. And this doesn't include the surgery center or anesthesia fees. And the alternative again is to do weight bearing exercises to your upper body, specifically your chest. Now, speaking of fat transfers, if the patient who has lost a lot of weight from GLP-1s had a previous BBL surgery, this may also need to be revised. If the weight loss is over 10 pounds, then the fat transfers to the butt will likely diminish. And as this fat is lost from the buttocks, the skin and the tissues will sag around it. Now, this will likely result in the patient seeking out another BBL or a revision of the fat transfers previously done to their buttocks. Now, the patient may even opt for an actual silicone butt implant over getting more fat transfers if they don't have enough fat to their abdomen to transfer to their butt. They also may opt for this if they plan to lose weight again in the future and think that they won't be able to sustain the fat grafts in the future. Now let's talk about the skin laxity all over the body. Plastic surgeons are already saying that they anticipate they'll be doing more skin tightening procedures in the next few years rather than the fat sculpting that they've been doing in previous years because of this surge in the popularity of GLP-1s for weight loss. People will often get lax skin more easily when the weight is lost rapidly and this may be one of the reasons that surgeons are anticipating this. Because the weight loss is so rapid on the GLP-1s, this skin laxity is more prevalent. Now remember, when we're talking about surgical skin tightening, we are talking about skin removal surgery, which is a very significant surgery. And while there are a lot of pros to this kind of surgery, there are some cons. Skin removal surgery is quite expensive, whereas there are some insurance companies that are now starting to cover the surgery. Their coverage only extends to the abdomen insofar as it is a functional deficit or a medical problem, like the excess skin causes a rash or some kind of infection. And although insurance companies are starting to cover the abdomen skin removal, their coverage doesn't extend to other body parts like the arms and the legs, which will have to be paid for out of pocket. Given that the skin removal procedure is very invasive, requiring a significant incision to multiple skin areas, the blood flow to those areas may be compromised which can impede healing and cause wound breakdown. Now, one of the biggest downsides to skin removal surgery is that it's very painful and it has a long recovery process. Now, the cost of excess skin removal surgery is pretty significant. And it does rely on different factors, like the experience of the surgeon, the geographical location of the practice, and the extent of the removal surgery. The surgery price itself can range from $5,000 to $15,000 per one area of skin removed. However, if multiple areas are involved, the cost can go up significantly. And of course, this cost does not include the anesthesia or the surgery center or other accessory fees. There's not always alternatives to getting skin removed. One alternative could be to lose the weight more slowly and to do weight-bearing exercises alongside the weight loss, but this isn't possible for everyone. And of course, another alternative can be to not have the skin removal surgery. Now, Kim has recently been seen out with even more weight loss to her abdomen. These photos are from December 2022. And seeing her with a bit of loose skin to her abdomen should absolutely make you feel better about having loose skin as well. It's important to understand that plastic surgery is a personal decision and not a necessary step for everyone who has loose skin after weight loss. For some people, plastic surgery may be a viable option. And for those people, it's really crucial to seek a board certified plastic surgeon who's extremely experienced in the procedure. But for others and for everyone else, it's essential to focus on the benefits of weight loss, such as improved health, increased energy levels, and enhanced quality of life. While loose skin may be a concern for some people, it's really important to recognize that that's just part 
of a successful weight loss journey. Let me know in the comments if you're on your own weight loss journey or if you're supportive of someone who is. Let's keep the comments kind and neutral and supportive of others. And please watch my other videos related to GLP ones. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you all and I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>